Hello everyone, welcome to the Gen Z Economist Show. I'm your host, Jarrett Templeton, and today I'd like to cover something that's been in the news lately. This brings us to Yahoo News. This is an article on the Gold Standard Restoration Act. This has been brought back up by Alex Mooney of West Virginia, who is now joined by Andy Biggs and Paul Gozar of Arizona. So what exactly is the Gold Standard Restoration Act? Well, H.R. 2435 would mean that the Treasury and the Federal Reserve would have to publicly disclose all of their gold holdings and gold transactions in 24 months. So the government would have about two years to reconcile all of its gold and gold transactions and then report that. At that time, the dollar would then be repegged at the market price of gold and then fixed. So you could bet your bottom dollar that if this bill was passed, the price of gold would skyrocket. So there would be a lot of uh, changes before the dollar was pegged to that gold price. So these Federal Reserve notes would also be redeemable for gold at that price. So essentially all of the dollars uh, would be redeemable for gold. So how much gold does the U.S. government own? Well, it owns around 262 million gold uh, ounces of gold. We'll just call it 262 million. It's a little bit less than that, but it's a round number. And this gold was priced at $42.22 per ounce back in 1971 when President Nixon took us off of the gold standard. So our gold is valued at that $42 an ounce on the books. So for uh, the government's purposes, the gold is worth $11 billion, which is essentially pocket change when you're $32 trillion in debt. So if we look at this and see how much gold the government owns and the price of that gold, we can kind of infer some stuff here. So currently that gold is valued at $42 an ounce, way below market price, for a total value of $11 billion and some change. But the market price as of the time of this recording is somewhere around $2,000 an ounce. Now gold can vary day to day, but we'll just call it 2,000. Well, that would value our gold reserves at about $522 billion, almost half a, tr a little over half a trillion dollars. But again, when you're $32 trillion in the hole, that half a trillion isn't much. So if we take that $32 trillion and had to pay off that debt with the amount of gold that we have, well, we would have to reprice the dollar to a whopping $122,000 an ounce. That is an insane amount of money. Um, but that's what it would take to back that $32 trillion. Now, there's around uh, an estimated $100 trillion uh, around the globe that exists. You know, a lot of this is outside of the U.S. It exists on balance sheets. So if you were to back every single one of these dollars by go uh, with gold, uh, the price of gold would have to be much higher than $122,000, probably closer to half a million dollars per ounce if you were to back all of the dollars that exist by the gold that the government has. So let's take a look at it another way. In 1971, uh, $1 was worth, is worth about $7.43 worth of purchasing power today. So there's been an inflation of 642% uh, since 1971. So if we see how the, the gold was priced at $42 an ounce, and then we marked it up, let's just say just to cover uh, the debt that we have to that $122,000 an ounce, well, that would be a 289,000% increase since 1971. That is an insane amount. That is hyperinflation, folks. So, and we would think that the price of gold would probably raise much higher if this bill was passed because the government isn't exactly going to stop incurring debt anytime soon. And if this bill was to be passed, who knows what the debt would be at that time. But you can just see around a 300,000% increase uh, in the price of the gold per ounce. That means the dollar has lost a tremendous amount of purchasing power if this was to happen. So, but why can't this happen? Why, why is there a death nail in this bill before it's even, um, you know, even been voted on? Well, that's because the government has already defaulted on its debt. You might not have known that. You, you probably weren't taught this in school. But in 1971, when President Nixon took us off the gold standard, that was the government defaulting on its debt. So in 1941, or not 1941, in the 1940s, uh, after World War II with the Bretton Woods Agreement, the United States government essentially pitched the dollar to all of these European countries and said, hey, why do you guys hold gold? Uh, you can hold dollars instead. The dollar is as good as gold. Give us all your gold. We'll give you dollars, treasury bills in exchange, and you can get a pretty good percentage return on the interest of holding those T-bills. And they're just as good as gold. If you want your gold back, just give us the dollars in exchange. What's, what's the harm? 
you know, we were trying to incentivize Europe uh, to join uh, in with the, the Western allies and to uh, stay away from communism. And that was a monetary influence, but it was also uh, twofold. So over, uh, you know, the Cold War up until 1971, the United States government was printing more dollars and they had gold to back those dollars. And when other countries started to realize that, they wanted to redeem their dollars back to get their gold back. And as the gold started leaving the United States, President Nixon shut the barn doors, keeping the cows inside, and said, nope, you can't get your gold back, and the dollars are now backed by the full faith and credit of the U.S. government. <laughs> well, I'll let you guys decide how much that's worth. But essentially, you couldn't get your gold back, so the dollar defaulted, but everyone was addicted to it. They needed dollars for international trade. We had the petrodollar system coming about in the 1970s, which all oil was now only traded for in dollars. So the dollar had a value and people couldn't get rid of it, but they couldn't get their gold back. So why is this important? Well, let's take a look at some solutions. And these aren't necessarily perfect solutions, uh, but they're things that may come up over this time, especially if we're seeing a gold restoration act on the table, or at least being brought up, we're probably going to see some of these things talked about as well. So history often repeats, it uh, doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. So what we have here on the left is a picture of a German Renten mark. Now, the Renten mark was from the Weimar Germany uh, period, which is in between uh, World War I and World War II, so the Weimar Republic. And Germany had huge amounts of inflation because they had all of these war bills they had to pay back. And essentially, they couldn't. They just had to print money to, to try to pay the bills down. And they just led to huge uh, amounts of hyperinflation because they didn't have the gold to pay for those bills. They couldn't back their currency with gold anymore. So the Renten mark was a way to try to get out from under that. So they created this Renton mark. It was another form of currency, which was backed by uh, real estate and uh, natural resources, but mainly just real estate and government property. Now, but you couldn't redeem your Renton marks for a building or a piece of land. They were just backed by this. It was more of an idea, but it was enough to stabilize the currency and they could uh, match the Renton mark to the dollar and, and set a, an exchange rate that was pretty stable which allowed uh, Germany to essentially kind of access the gold with the United States, because if the Renton mark can be exchanged for dollars and those dollars can be exchanged for gold, they almost have access to uh, gold they don't have by pledging uh, this, um, you know, their real estate to back the currency. So it's a way, it was a way to leverage the gold uh, that the United States had. So why do I bring this up? Well, the idea of real estate, property, backing up a currency uh, isn't necessarily a bad idea for the United States. You know, we do have a lot of gold, but we also have a ton of natural resources that the government owns and a lot of land that the government owns. So if they wanted to back the dollar by this property, that could potentially help stop some of the inflation. And this might be a better idea, but it's, it wouldn't be redeemable. It's not like if you had a, uh, a million dollars, you could go buy, you know, a piece of land or, or a, a government building necessarily. But it might be a way to kind of slow this down. Now, in the middle here, we have a platinum coin. Uh, this brings up the trillion dollar coin. This always comes into mind. Uh, there's typically an article about this uh, whenever inflation gets really high or uh, the government's debt is being talked about. This is kind of this theoretical uh, saving grace, the, this, the, the ticket to get the United States out of debt. And what this is, how the United States Mint can mint gold, silver, and platinum coins. And the founding fathers set limitations on the amount of dollars that these coins could be valued at because they didn't want the currency to be inflated. So they can mint like dollar and half dollar and quarter dollar uh, silver coins. And I think they can mint gold coins all the way up to $25, but it's, it's not a ton when you consider how much the gold is actually worth. And that was the idea. It would prevent the United States from entering inflation. But with the Federal Reserve, they, have, they can print paper notes, and these notes aren't redeemable for gold. So the government can't actually print dollars. They can sell treasuries in exchange for dollars and they can mint coins, but they can't print. But what they can do is mint platinum coins because the founding fathers never intended or, or realized that platinum would be as abundant as it is today. And they never th like could see that the platinum could potentially be a medium of exchange. They also re thought that, uh, you know, platinum's exchange rate for gold would set a lid kind of on how high the dollar amount could be for these platinum coins. But because they didn't set the law in place, Congress could theoretically order the mint to uh, mint a trillion dollar coin, 
or a $32 trillion coin or a $100 trillion coin and just pay off all their debt in one fell swoop. That's a, that's a possibility, yes, uh, but that would essentially tank the dollar. The dollar would be no more. The dollars wouldn't even be worth the paper they're printed on. So this is more of a, a fantasy, but it's an interesting thought experiment. And it's something to keep in mind. So on the right here, we have a picture of an oil pump. And this is uh, really more realistic than the other two options, although real estate does come into play. But the reason I bring in oil is that the BRICS nations are considering creating a currency uh, based on oil, gold, natural resources that they have in abundance. So oil uh, is a better medium of exchange than gold in some ways because everyone needs oil. And if those the BRICS countries are trying to get away from the petrodollar. So by having their own currency, that's one way to do so. And if that currency is redeemable for oil, well, then a lot of other nations may be interested and start turning towards that. Well, the United States has a ton of oil. A lot of that oil is on government land. So if uh, Congress wanted to back the dollar by something, again, it would be very difficult to back all $100 trillion. Uh, but you, they could add maybe our natural resources, such as the land, the gold, uh, you know, uranium, the things that the United States has on government land to back that, gold, uh, back that dollar and to kind of give the dollar some value. So that, that seems more realistic to me. I think we're going to see the BRICS nations come out with something like that very soon. And I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think the Gold Standard Restoration Act is a viable way to reduce inflation in the United States? Or maybe there's another way. Do you think we should back the currency with something else? Let me know down in the comments below. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe for more. And I'll see you in the next one.